Hey, what's up everyone? Chip Walters here and today I want to talk about a new add-on that I've just created and that I'm going to give away for free. This add-on is the actual first one I've scripted entirely by myself, which has been an interesting process. I've done a lot of programming in the past, but I've never actually worked directly with Blender's API. And so this particular add-on gave me the opportunity to do exactly that. Jerry Perkins, aka Master Xeon, and I have been working on some gaming projects lately for a company you all know well. And one of the things that they've asked us to do as we develop our concepts is to create some wires for them. And as most of you know, I have a sketch style pro plugin that can do some of that, but it doesn't really work that well when you're trying to create all of the geometry as wireframe. It's more of an illustrative pass, kind of like SketchUp's is. In this case, they want to actually see a complete wireframe, kind of like this. And then there's some other things that we wanted to do with that. I wanted to add an AO pass to it, an admin occlusion pass. And I also wanted to create a little bit of a different background, some harsh, harsher shadows, things like that. And the biggest thing that I wanted to make sure I did is be able to create something that would render lightning fast. And as most of you know, sketch style is based on the freestyle component of Blender and freestyle is not lightning fast. And what I've done, I've created this plugin called Chalk Style, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to install it. But basically, when you load it, it comes up right here, and you click on this little tab that says Chalk Style, and you've got Documentation, and you've got the Overlays area, and you've got the Object Types area. And so these are all switches that allow you to show different kinds of things. So each one of these will allow you to do different kinds of renderings. But for the most part, the way you want to use this is just turn all of these off. And you can leave this alone. Uh, this is for a fine, more fine tuning. But we turn all these off and we'll pretty much get everything. And then we want to click off of the object. We don't want it to be selected. And then all we do is we hit this render chalk style button. And pretty much that's easy. Now let me show you how fast this renders. This is set up currently at an HD 1080p resolution. And when I click on this render chalk style button, it's going to actually turn blue while it's rendering. So here we go. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. So under three seconds, we were able to get all the passes necessary to create our final render composition. So you're probably asking yourself, well, where did it save those? Well, it saved them directly to this folder, wherever you set your output. In this case, I've set it to temp, which is the default place, which is at the C level. So let's go ahead and look at that folder now. So here's the fo folder, and you can see we have three images that were saved. This first one, was rendered at the same resolution, 1920 by 1080. The second one's called Outline, and this one's rendered at twice the resolution of the original. And the last one is Wireframe, and it also is rendered at twice the resolution of the original. Now, how do we composite these? So Chalk Style will come with a file, a blend file. In this case, it's Chalk Style 07.blend. It might be numbered higher than 07 by the time you see this. And when you install Chalk Style, you're going to basically install this zip file using the standard installation method that you always use. It will install this file directly in the folder with your add-ons. If you don't want to search for this file, then you can move this file anywhere you want. You can go in here and you'll see this is the file right there and you can move it anywhere you want to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to launch a second instance of Blender. So now we've launched the second instance of Blender. I'm going to go ahead and open that chalk style. And when I do that, what's real important is that we want to make sure we load the UI from that chalk style file. So if I go over here, this is the seventh. I'm going to open it and I'm going to come right into this compositing session. And you may say, well, why didn't we just install this in the original file? And the reason why is that you may already have compositing setups done and I don't want to interfere with those. So that's why we have two different instance of Blender running. And, and to run a second instance of Blender, it's very simple. Just click using your middle mouse button on the currently running Blender icon in your start bar. So now we have two of these up. This is blank. So let's go ahead and fill these in. So I'm going to hit this button, say open, and I'll go in here and I will find that folder, but it's in C, TMP, and the very top one I want to get is the AO image. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here, see temp, and I'm gonna use the outline image is the second one. Notice it says outline image here. And then of course the wireframe image is the third one. And you only need to do this once per session. I'll explain that here in just a second. Okay, once we've done that, we've got an image here 
And what we want to do is we want to make sure that our render resolution here is set to the same as the AO size. So how do we know what the AO size is? Well, we can click on this image. We can go into the item and we'll see right here, it tells us what the size is. So we want to make sure this matches this. Notice I also have Node Wrangler installed. You should have that installed because it's going to make some things much easier in a second. Now, once we've got this done, it's easy for us to go into the view screen and we can say fit and it'll, it'll move this around for us. Notice that we have two outlines here. Let's just fix that wireframe. There we go. Now we have the wireframe. Okay. And then it's just simple as just hitting the F12 button to render the whole thing. And there we have our final image and we can save it from here as a ping or whatever we want to. And it's that simple. Now, there are a lot of settings that you can play around with. Let's talk about that for just a second. They're all done in this node group right here. So if I want to darken the shadow, I can just turn the brightness from 0.6 all the way down. And you'll see I get a much darker shadow. These settings have been optimized for creating a pretty good wireframe, but there's some things that you can do. I can actually invert the image if I want to. That gives me uh, the ability to create kind of a blueprint if I want to composite that. There's some other things I can do with that. But for the most part, you know, the harsh shading, if I turn that off, then I'm going to get more of an ambient occlusion mode than what was originally set at. Uh, outline strength is going to give me a darker outline, as you can see here, uh, up here. The uh, wireframe strength is going to do the same thing. It's going to give me a darker wireframe. So I can, I can adjust that back and forth. And then the scale factor fi for a final image, this is important if we're going to use a different image other than our AO image. So we can actually composite over different images. And if we want to do that, we might want to change this number. But for now, we're going to leave that alone. Uh, we'll cover that in a different tutorial. Let's talk about how we can automate this process now. So I'm back in here and I'll go in here. Let's do a different view of this. Let's say we're going to do it like this. Okay. And once we have this set up, we'll just hit render chalk style. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000 is done. Go back to our compositor. And now here's where our node wrangler comes in. We just basically say reload images. And once we've done that, it basically fits that new image here to another F12. And here's our new image ready to go. So you can see that that works pretty well. There's a lot of other things that we can talk about, in particular, how to use sketch style with this to create some images where you can actually see the decals, keep parts of the render exactly as you want them to be, whereas you leave other parts of the render as a wireframe. So we can talk about those a bit later, but for now, this is the plugin. If you have any input, please let me know and uh, look forward to seeing you guys online.